Oh, all right, one minute to go. Check this out, everyone. If you've been doing this little these starter activities that I've put on the board, have a look at that rectangle along the bottom of the screen. Okay, this took me ages. You ready? You ready? Look at that. So you have got 90 seconds to finish off those activities. Pen and paper would probably help for this lesson if you're going to come every week because we'll be building on what we've learned. But if you haven't got pen and paper, you could just do it in your head. All right. Let's uh, let's have a look then. This first this first question was a bit mean, really, because it was a bit hazy, wasn't it? I'll show you what I what I thought. I thought that milk was an ingredient. I thought that crisps were a product. Uh, pancake definitely a product. Sugar and butter and apple I put as an ingredient. Cake I put as a product. Egg I put as an ingredient. And bread I put as a product. So. We we're about to learn about atoms. This is a warm up. What I'd like to do is just think about why did you put the foods that you put in the ingredients list in the ingredients list? What is it about those particular foods that make you think that they are ingredients and not products? Now, I said it was a bit of a mean question because actually, like if you were making a trifle, then cake would be an ingredient. And same with a sandwich. Like, you could definitely say that bread is an ingredient if you made a sandwich. So you can make things with the products as well. Now, I would say the thing that makes the ingredients ingredients is that you can't break them down into any other thing. Like, a tiny bit of apple is still apple, okay? A tiny bit of sugar is still sugar. That's what I think, and that's the kind of idea um, that we're going to look at today. So atoms are kind of like the ingredients of life. So everything you see, just have a look around you now, you'll see loads of different textures, shapes, colours. They're all made of something. So in my lockdown lessons, we talked a lot about how everything is made of atoms. They're tiny little balls. <laughs> that's me telling you that I, that's me saying that I should be holding up a picture of an atom. Tiny little balls, protons and neutrons in the middle and electrons whizzing around the outside. I've probably tricked people a bit in my lessons before because I kept telling them that everything in the world is made of atoms, but they might have thought that everything in the world is just made of like one kind of atom. Like atoms are just like a Lego brick and everything in the world is made of these Lego bricks. That is not the case because Lego world would be a bit boring after a while, wouldn't it? Like we've got stuff that's squishy, we've got edible stuff, we've got stuff we can set on fire. There are actually 118 different atoms that we know of. So you're breathing in oxygen and nitrogen right now. You've got calcium in your teeth. Uh, some of them give off deadly radiation. They are definitely not near you. We'll learn about those lesser. That's, that's a very exciting lesson when we learn about radioactivity. But all the atoms in your house are perfectly safe. Don't worry. So my question to you was, how do we tell these different atoms apart? OK, is it like different colours like Lego bricks? Do they smell different? The answer is the different number of protons. So here's an atom of hydrogen. So you can see there's a proton in the middle, there's a neutron in the middle, and there's an electron whizzing around the outside. If we add a different number of protons, we turn that atom into a different thing. So this is one atom, one particle of hydrogen. But if we add another proton, let's add another neutron to balance it out, we turn that atom into helium, just like the gas that you put in your balloons to make them super cool. If we add six more protons, so we give it eight protons, that is an atom of oxygen, okay? So atoms, protons and neutrons clustered into the centre and electrons whizzing around the outside and different numbers of protons are different types of atom. And there's 118 of these things and they make up everything in the world that we know of. So let's go back to our question at the beginning. If you split that foil again and again and again and again and again until you couldn't split it anymore, you would be left with an atom of aluminium, which has 13 protons in the middle. And it's the same with the iron nail or something made of gold or silver. If you split a gold ring again and again and again, you would just get an atom of gold. So any material like that that is made of only one kind of atom, they are called elements. Ah, Abby, well done. You thought the number of electrons changed as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So if you're a bit more advanced, usually, most often, 
uh, the number of electrons of an atom is the same as the number of protons. Protons have got a positive charge, electrons have got a negative charge, and atoms are generally neutral. But you can actually take electrons off atoms quite easily. If you looked at any of my lockdown lessons like on static electricity, you've seen that it's quite easy to pull electrons off atoms. So they don't decide what the atom actually is. Like this aluminium atom could lose like three electrons and it would still be an aluminium atom. But as soon as it lost a proton, it would be a different kind of atom. Thank you, Abby. This is why I like comics. So all that stuff is called an element. And next week we're going to look at the periodic table, which is a beautiful big list of all the elements in the world. Right, over to you now. Feel free to comment if you like, and I will chat to you. But I want you to choose two of these tasks, please. Um, so you are all totally different ages. Like some of you will be about seven and some of you are 13. So choose a question which challenges you but doesn't terrify you, all right? So if you're not sure about atoms, you could sketch one using those bits. Tell me the name of that atom. Or you could write a sentence, what is an element? You've got to be really careful in science. You've got to use language very carefully. I encourage you to do that one because it's amazing how it seems like a simple task, but if you miss one word, you totally change the meaning. Tell me why you're an element or not. And the red one is, <laughs> you would only really learn that at A level. If you're feeling confident and you want to learn, give your brain some exercise by trying that red one and then I'll give you the answer after. So you get on with that and I'm going to whitter at people in the comments, okay? Oh, Tasneem says, Beryllium, have you been watching your YouTube songs? My son is obsessed with that. Uh, Hydrogen and helium, anything but beryllium. Beryllium has uh, four protons, so you've got to be very careful. That is a very good answer. You clearly know quite a bit already. But beryllium has four protons, and two of these are protons, and two of these are neutrons. Let's go then. So this is um, an atom that I've drawn over here. Pretty shabby atom. You might have drawn a circle. That circle doesn't exist, but it's just to show that the electrons are whizzing around the middle. The green box answer, Adam says it's helium. Well done, Adam. Yes, it is. Hydrogen is one proton and helium is two protons. So, yep, that is an atom of helium. Well done if you tried to sketch that. Sketching a very good way to remember things. Um, what is an element? An element is a substance made of only one atom. Is what you might be tempted to say. And you might say if you were panicking in an exam. Why is that not right? An element is a substance made of only one type of atom. Just remember to say type of, because obviously a substance made of only one atom is just one atom. Someone said it, you're right, you're not an element. You're made of more than one type of atom, although actually 96% of you is just oxygen, hydrogen, carbon and nitrogen atoms. Thank you, Zil, that's good to know. Um, and protons, yeah, this is the A-level stuff, but I love this. So if you know about charge, protons have got a positive charge. They actually push away from each other, like other ends of a magnet would do. We'll learn a lot more about that later. Um, but they're only held together by a force called the strong nuclear force, which is incredibly strong, but it doesn't extend very far. So once uh, the middle of an atom gets too big, the strong nuclear force isn't sort of far reaching enough to hold them all together. And that's where you get radioactivity. That's where the atom starts breaking down. The cool stuff starts to happen that we will look at later. So well done if you had a think about that. All right, moving on then. Those were elements. What about water? If you split water in half and then half again and again and again and again, what would you be left with? This is where I spent my holiday making a beautiful picture of an oxygen molecule, which I will post on Facebook later. So you wouldn't end up with an atom. You would end up with um, three atoms, in fact. You'd have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom stuck together. So if you've heard water called H2O, that's where that comes from. That tells us that there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. I think lesson three will look at those symbols in a lot more detail than what they tell you. So if you split it again, if you split H2O up, you wouldn't have water anymore. You'd have two elements, you'd have hydrogen and oxygen. So water isn't an element. <laughs> I'm trying to ignore these funny comments. Water is not an element because it's made of more than one kind of atom. So what do you call something that the smallest version of it is more than one type of atom? They are compounds. So popular ones have nice common names, like water is quite nice to say, but they've usually got pretty scientific names. So for example, salt, 
um, is actually in chemistry terms, sodium chloride, because that tells you that it's got one sodium atom and one chlorine atom stuck together like that. So there's a particle of salt. If you're keeping up and you want to learn some cool words, that's a molecule of salt. A molecule is just atoms stuck together. And we'll get to the weird endings later. Don't worry. Ide means um, that there's, there's two different particles in the molecule, but hopefully you can see from the name sodium chloride that it's sodium and chlorine. Baking powder, look at that! The proper name for baking powder is sodium hydrogen carbonate, which again, it's easier for us to say baking powder, but if you're a chemist, then it's really useful to be able to see the name of a thing and know what's in it. So a chemist would look at this and think, oh yeah, it's got sodium in it and hydrogen and carbon. Carbon dioxide, is one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms stuck together because di is Greek for two. Right then, so <laughs> this is a bit where if you like you get to run around in a frenzy. Um, I want you to go to your bathroom if it's nearby, go to your kitchen, in your kitchen find the junk food, okay? Have a look at the ingredients of your junk food or your toothpaste or your shampoo and see if you can find any compounds listed and see what elements they're made of. So I had a look around my house and I managed to find ingredients that had all this, all these things in it. So see if in the next like two minutes you can find, I don't know, sulfur carbonate or magnesium oxide listed in something. See, see how many compounds are around you because they are everywhere. And again, if you're keeping up, if you're a bit older, then eight at the end means the compound has oxygen in it. So it's like a quick chemistry way of saying that. So calcium carbonate has calcium and carbon in it, but the eight means it's also got oxygen in it. All right, off you go. Tell me what you find. All right, let's move on, okay? Because I have another task for you. I'd like you to have a look at these things now. Some of them, again, you might have in front of you. Have a look at these and sort them into element and compound. I'll just give you 10 seconds for that. So you can just look at them and decide. Are they elements or are they compounds? Right, foil, we've already covered that. So hopefully you said that it's an element. T we, some people still call it tin foil. Tin is also an element but we don't use tin anymore because it made the food taste a bit metally, funnily enough, so aluminium turned out to be better. So we've been, we still call it tin foil, it actually hasn't been tin for about a hundred years. Um, your lead in your pencil, again, lead turned out to be incredibly dangerous, so now we use carbon, but that is still an element. Uh, salt is a compound, as we've seen. Sugar, you might have guessed, because it's quite similar to salt, so crystal is also a compound. Um, one piece and two piece are coated in copper. There is something else underneath, but what you see is an element. And five piece and ten piece is also they're coated in nickel, which is an element. And teaspoons, uh, that's a compound, iron and carbon mixed together. So iron, good strong metal, and carbon to make it even stronger, which all together you call steel. And cereal, well, as we've seen, there's loads of stuff in cereal, um, but it is a compound. All right, so you, I was thinking you will probably find that quite hard because compounds are elements that are chemically joined together. So you can't separate them anymore. Like, you know, we've seen that if you, if you give water a really good shake or, you know, blow it up, you still won't separate those oxygen and hydrogen atoms. Um, it's biscuit dough that is a mixture. So a compound, is where the atoms are chemically joined, as we've seen. A mixture just means they're mixed together. So it would be really, really difficult to separate all the flour and the sugar and the salt from a biscuit dough, but you could do it. They're not chemically bound together, not until they're cooked. Okay, so that is the end of our lesson. So this is the formal bit. I just want you to have a little read through of this. This is what I was thinking that you would learn in this lesson today. So if you feel comfortable filling in all those gaps, then well done. Um, like I say, next week we're doing a periodic table. So I will do a quick recap of what we learned today and then we'll move on to oh, how amazing it is that we can predict elements and they're all in that amazing table. Um, so an atom is made of protons and neutrons with orbiting electrons. I wanted you to know that the number of 
people at GCSE still writing their exam that it's electrons, but it's not because electrons can pop on and off and on atoms easily. It's the protons that tells you what substance it is. Substances made of all the same atom are called elements. And things made of more of two or more different atoms joined together are compounds. And I, I know that some of you can because you've re been reading me out your breakfast cereal. Um, that elements and compounds sort of sound slightly different. So if you enjoyed that, then you can come and watch me in a format that I'm much more comfortable with because I did it all the way through lockdown. So this spot, 1.30 on a Tuesday, used to be me doing a kind of interactive, like you did a, an experiment alongside me, you get to see my face the whole time, you lucky devils. And we did a story time as well, which people really liked. So that has moved to a Thursday at six, or a Sunday at 9.30. So I'm just gonna repeat it, so it's both gonna be live. And I've put in some new things like Dinosaur of the Week, I'm gonna do a little news, news broadcast from history, that kind of thing. So if you, uh, if you want some more, you can't wait until next Tuesday, then come and see that. And like I say, next week, again, if you, <laughs> you want to bear with me and see something slightly slicker, hopefully, now I've had a bit of practice, then next week we're doing the periodic table. Um, thank you so much for joining me, you lot. I really enjoyed that. It's so nice to be back in lessons where we can build on our knowledge and learn a bit more each week. I love exploring like black holes or boo, but this is, this is kind of more fun for me. Um, I am really only able to do this. Like, I'm only able to carry on because a percentage of people who watch support me on Patreon, which is a website where you sign up to pay people like a small amount each month. So you can support me on there with three pounds a month or five pounds a month or ten pounds a month and there's like various thank yous so if you sign up with five pounds a month you get my magazine which i write every two months um which will be posted to your door i'm very excited about that and there's like a cookbook that i wrote if you sign up with any amount i've got some rainbow glasses in the moment that i will post you um if you can't afford to pay anything per month it is so useful thank you to the people who've been sharing this because understandably the um, homeschooling like groups are really locked down. I basically get spammed by people like me all the time so I've stayed away but it means so much more if people who have actually seen it share it on those groups and say I've done this and I actually liked it so yeah if you can't afford to pay me on Patreon it is so useful thank you so much to the people who have already done that just like told any friends that are homeschooling about it. Bye Daniel! Tasnim, any homework? Um, no, do you want homework? I can start doing your homework if you like. <laughs> Will says no homework. All right, well, what am I gonna do if you don't do it, Will? What am I gonna do? Am I gonna put you in detention? No. Bye, Amelia. Oh, see you, Mariah. Bye, Eleanor. Bye, Hannah. I hope if you are very new to homeschooling, then you're enjoying it. Yep, see you Thursday or Sunday. Or next Tuesday, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.